All right, Python on hardware time. Blinka, 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 blinka. Um, this week on the newsletter, um, please subscribe, by the way. I'll talk about where to find this out. Um, lots of things going on. We're almost ready for 8.1 release. Um, Candidate Zero is out. Lots of great projects, including a physical motorized Minecraft box made with Lego. And uh, there is a review of MicroPython 1.20. Um, since we're getting close to 810 Candidate, uh, 810 candidate Zero, um, you were going to talk, the synth stuff is coming along, right? Yeah, the stuff that I'm most excited, well, I mean, there's a lot of bug fixes. You want to scroll down because I think there's some. Good yeah, there's, there's a list. Um, I'm going to stuff too. First off, Scilabs contributed an uh, MG24 port, and we're actually chatting with them, so we might make a board or stock a board from their stuff. Oh, we got a contribution for animated GIF support, so you can like now play GIFs within CircuitPython. Um, DVI support for our, you know, like native DVI, so you can have CircuitPython where Apple go to a TV screen, which is just um, hilarious and fun. And you also do like, you know, HDMI graphics from a uh, RP2040. You can also change the CPU frequency dynamically in the RP2040, which is part of that DVI, the Pico DVI project, because you have to overclock the chip. Um, the Synthia stuff I think is really cool. That is um, what Jepler has been working on. Uh, he says he's like kind of finished for now, but if you want to like make fairly complicated synthesizers natively, like, you know, it's not a sampler. It's like you're creating waveforms and you have LFOs and you add them and subtract them and do stuff and you have envelopes. Um, check out the Synthio uh, interface. It's something that I wanted CircuitPython to do. I thought it'd be really fun to be able to make synthesizers from um, within CircuitPython. That's some of my favorite stuff. There's also a lot of bug fixes as well. Yeah. And um, as mentioned in the chat, kind of a big deal. Silicon Labs contributing a core. Kind of a big deal. Like, this is happening. Like, we have yeah. we we have momentum. They're actually like, hey, this is important. We want a lot of people to use this. Um, it's been battle tested. Um, someone today, um, I think, what I don't remember which um, social media I was on. They're like, wow, like, I started off at CircuitPython 3, and now you're already up to 8. Like, this is kind of neat, and the board they had, it just it just worked. Yeah, it keeps um, So before I uh, talk about that, and speaking of, is I think that uh, this project is worth noting, kind of cool. Um, this is reviving assistive technology with quirky uh, quirky and micro radio keypads. Hmm. So this is, um, you know, you can see you put your hand on it like that. Yeah, it's a quarter. But it's a... But it's got LCD. Yeah, nice. and it's, it, and it's and you know, you could tell you could do, you know, one-handed um, typing. But um, it's CircuitPython code for the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico version of the quirky keyboard based on the work done by MicroWriter. Um, the device emulates a USB HID, US keyboard, and no specific driver. But if you use the Adafruit HID CircuitPython libraries, um, you can do quite a bit more. So check it out. Um, I think that's a neat, another neat example of being able to take hardware that uh, really can't be used with modern equipment, but using something like CircuitPython. Um, and then as you follow along with circuit python one of the neat things and this is like one of my favorite makers so i'll go over to uh this this screenshot um ben, yeah. yeah so this is let me uh move us for a second here um this is always kind of neat because here's a maker that has these like minifig circuit python compatible devices and every single time there's a new version of circuit python right away out of the box it's fully supported um you just drag over the file and right away you get all the new features so this is one of the things that was important to us is how do we empower makers who want to do their own boards and they just don't want to like manage firmware forever yeah so, we'll support firmware we'll basically support your board forever as long as you don't have to do anything special for it um but we have so many different chips that are supported out of the box that um, if you submit a board definition, it'll be in CircuitPython forever. And that's how we got to over 400 boards. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, we just met with Eric from Seed, uh, Zach from Particle. And I was trying to do some rounds with talking to um, some of the folks out there from Arduino to every board maker. And there is like a drift in the market. Like there is, you know, companies that are just going in a different direction um, than like making things for others to make, to build off of. Um, they want you to buy their platform, um, only use their services, and that's it's, that's it. And if you're someone who wants to build a business or build an ecosystem, that's kind of hard because you can't really do a lot of stuff with it. So seeing 
um, this maker, Ben, who's been doing this for a while and then seeing um, well more than half of the 400 boards that are uh, circuit Python compatible, um, people being able to build companies and businesses around them. That's really neat. So that's why um, I think this one is a good example. Plus it's like everyone when they see, when they see this board, they're like, oh my God, it's a cute board. Uh, but it's a good example. This person doesn't have to manage firmware. It's always just works. No builds required. It yeah. Would generate all the, every, you know, every commit generates all the UF2s and bin files necessary. Yeah. So you can always test the latest. And um, uh, one other note, if you want to learn more about um, that board, um, I think we have a little note here. The um, uh, mini thing. Yeah. So the... Um, Circuit Python show. Uh, Paul's in the chat here. He just interviewed Ben, so that's coming up um, soon. And you'll be able to listen in about this board and more. Um, so that's kind of cool. There's a Circuit Python show. Uh, the newsletter is available adafordaily.com, delivered to your inbox every single week. And we don't spam. We don't do anything with your email address. It is just to get you this newsletter. And that is it. It's a completely separate site. But we have Adafordaily than adafruit.com because we don't want to commingle those two things. 